Mr. Wainwright came with uh, uh, with a severe pain in both his knees. He was quite restricted in his mobility. Um, he, and uh, he experienced pain in uh, even his daily activities of uh, living. Um, something like you know, walking, climbing stairs was was getting difficult for him. And he was um, he was a special man because he he was he wanted to be active. He was very motivated. And when he came here, he uh, he probably had one of the quickest recoveries because he really participated extremely well in his care plan. And he was quite motivated, and I could see that because it's because he was probably that active that he uh, found the pain really, um, uh, really uh, troublesome. He and and, and uh, that's how uh, that's how he ended up coming here. But uh, we had a uh, where I, I first um, talked to him on phone when we when he sent in uh, went through his insurance company. We were contacted to see if we could do a knee replacement for him here. And when uh, and always one thing that we have with medical tourism patients is to really um, assess and see whether they actually require a surgery or not. And because a lot of the assessment is clinical and um, it depends a lot on what the patient's symptoms are. And it kind of gets a little difficult to assess without actually seeing the patient in person. But we, we did get a lot of the records um, uh, shipped to us with, uh, by the insurance company and those really helped. In addition, uh, I like to talk to my patients. So we had a very long chat, uh, uh, close to an hour, as to how his symptoms were and how, 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 how uncomfortable he was. And I wanted to assess that he really um, actually needed the surgery before he came here. You don't want him coming all the way to the island and then realize he doesn't need one. But uh, we kind of uh, did all the checks and balances. And then, we, and then once I saw his x-rays, I was convinced that, yes, this man probably needed the, the, the surgery. And, and then he came over to the island. Well, uh, he came with severe arthritis in his knees, so his, uh, his he had pretty much no cartilage left between his knee joints, and uh, the bone was rubbing against the the bone of the femur and the tibia, the the leg and the thigh bones were basically rubbing against each other, and uh, that's never a pretty uh, sight because uh, it, it, just like your fingernails, the cartilage between your knees actually protects and protects you because it doesn't uh, allow you to feel any sort of pain, but it, it's like your fingernail doesn't doesn't hurt when you cut your fingernail right so you when you walk on your cartilage it doesn't hurt you but when you um, cut your fingernail too close to the skin it's very painful the same way the cartilage goes away and the bone rubs against each other it's really painful the advantage with the fingernail is it can regenerate the cartilage cannot so uh, once the cartilage is gone and then you're uh, once the cartilage is gone, you're like left with uh, uh, just bone rubbing, a bare bone rubbing against each other, and that's a pretty painful condition. Now, what we did was we did a total knee replacement for him, and we went ahead and did a, a, a bilateral single stage knee replacement. Now, what that means is that I operated on him, uh, and be because he was uh, quite fit and uh, medically um, uh, cleared for a bilateral sur surgery at the same time we operate on both his knees at the same time and uh, the advantage of that is that the patient recovers much faster the complications are far lesser with, with uh, contrary to the, pop, the, the, the the usual thought that you would actually have more complications with a bilateral single stage surgery uh, studies have shown that the bilateral single stage actually has less complications compared to uh, stage surgery with uh, knees done uh, three or four days apart so uh, we operated on both his knees at the same sitting under the same anesthesia and uh, the very next day after surgery he was up and about, he started walking. He, um, he and he was quite thrilled, and 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 he was surprised as to how little pain he had. He he did have a little pain immediate post surgery, but once he uh, once the meds kicked in and he was he was very uh, comfortable. Uh, he really participated well in his care plan, and he um, got up to standing and walking the next day. And and uh, he he uh, by the third or fourth day, we were ready to send him. Uh, back uh, to uh, the resort where he continued for the rest of the week, did his physiotherapy and um, he ended up um, uh, coming to me about uh, uh, two, a little more than two weeks uh, after his surgery uh, 
to, to have a final uh, checkup and when uh, before he left the island and uh, he had already achieved about 120 degrees of knee movement in, in his uh, knees, both his knees and he was very happy with, with his progress and I was very happy too. I think he, he's done really well. I think uh, to a large extent it's not just the surgery in, in orthopedic surgery it's always it's it's it, it's fifty percent surgery fifty percent it's the physiotherapy and the effort that the patient puts in to his rehab that that also makes a big difference to to that person's rehab well what we do is because the cartilage is totally destroyed what we do in the surgery is we um, we go through the anterior approach we uh, we uh, cut in in front of the uh, uh, patella and then um, we have to kind of, I'm, I, this might sound a little gross, but we have to dislocate the knee, uh, but it's in a safe surgical dislocation and uh, wherein we uh, and then reach to various parts of the knees and we can shape the cartilage and the bones out so that we can fit the implant to uh, the bone. Um, we do a lot of pre-operative testing, so we, we know exactly which uh, implant uh, size or this one has to be put in. But at the same time, uh, on, on table when we do it, we also check with our own instruments and, uh, and, 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 and gauges to know ex if, if our pre-operative templating was correct. And then we go ahead with the, with the requisite size and we kind of um, uh, manufacture a custom implant for the patient it's done on table. It's, uh, uh, we have the various sizes. We have different sizes of the poly, different shapes of the poly. We have different uh, sizes and shapes of the tibial trays and the femoral implants. And we see which fits the patient the best in the permutation and combination that we have, we have uh, given by the company. And then, uh, it's like, uh, and then we see which fits best to the patient and we put that in. Uh, we, uh, and once that's done, we uh, s s put the whole thing back together and stitch it back up and then they're good to walk from the next day. So we are, as in, in, F, in, a, in essence, we are try we actually manufacturing a custom implant for uh, a patient. Only the customization is done in the hands of the surgeon on the operating table. He is doing extremely well with regard to his rehab and uh, he's, he's uh, quite pain free. He's, uh, um, uh, he's doing stair climbing and uh, he's quite comfortable with it and he's almost ready to give up the stick. Um, he came into my office uh, with the stick, you know, pushed up like he was carrying a, 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 <laughs> an umbrella or something. So I told him it's meant to <laughs> be used for support. So he was uh, he was doing really good. But uh, yes, uh, after a knee replacement, we don't really recommend uh, running or, uh, you know, uh, sports as an activity. But yes, you can be very active with the rest of the things you can do, like a, like a brisk walk, a light, um, you you know, uh, uh, um, you know, a walk on the beach and other things. You, you'll be able to do all that. But um, uh, running and um, jogging and uh, those and, and and also the sport activities. Uh, you can do golfing or you you, you can do the, some other um, you know low uh, impact uh, sports kind of activities. You can do it, but not something like tennis or um, uh, definitely not football or basketball so uh, that's because uh, the implant has a life too and we've stuck the implant to the bone using some bone cement we don't want it all loosening out too soon so we want to see that knee last at least 20 years 25 years so I think a little ex to a little extent you you don't uh, you you your, your act lifestyle has to be modified but uh, but still you can be very active within those uh, permutation within those limitations